PDNZ. There's something I sort of realised in some of the videos I've been uploading. Um, there's no intro to them and there's obviously no end. That happens because I just throw a lot of clips together to make something up. I try and you know keep within that 20 minute, 30 minute video um, time frame because I realise your attention span normally dies off after the first 7 minutes with my videos but that's all good. Um, so I just thought I'll try and start this one with a bit of an opening um, and show you obviously what I'm up to. It's the middle of winter here now. We've had snow in the high country around us, so it's pretty cold in the workshop here. Turn the heater on, but it doesn't do much. But just keep working away at it. Yeah, I mean, my videos get thrown together because I only work on this, as I said before, when I get a bit of time during the day. So I just might turn the camera on and grab something, and, and then, yeah, I'll try and put them together. I'll just, yeah, I want to say thanks for um, people that are following me and um, smashing that like button, it does help and you put it out there if you belong to any Facebook groups and that from where you come from and put a link if you think it's worth watching for other people to enjoy. I realise it's pretty in depth with what I'm doing, it's just not a, a quick time lapse of a truck rebuild, it's yeah this is going to drag on for a while. But I don't know, I appreciate watching other YouTubers. Um, if that wasn't there, I don't think I'd be doing this. Gives you the confidence to try something. Um, you can go and watch and learn. I mean, you don't have to do what they're doing, but it gives you ideas. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel here. You've just got to learn to uh, sit and watch and take the time to absorb what's happening on there. Enough rambling on, and I'll show you what we're up to here. So what I've been doing today is I'll just put my light behind me here. So, I went to the local um, paint shop that I'm going to deal with. Really helpful, eh? He's really informative. So, I went and got some 240 paper. Two different sizes there for my two different sanders. And as you can see, I've attacked the one of the fuel tanks. I tried to have a look online to see what people do um, for working with aluminium. There's, there's a lot out there, but yeah, these tanks are quite badly damaged. Obviously you would have seen in my previous videos where I've got some of the bad dents out, but as soon as you start sanding, yeah, all that shows up. What type of um, fillers to use to try and get rid of some of these blemishes. This is the back side of the tank against the chassis, so you don't see this piece anyway. And I, I know the light's probably showing um, different reflections and it looks like it's really bad, but it is quite smooth to the touch. And obviously where there's dark little, yeah, little imperfection there. I, I do want to try and get a reasonable finish on those because they will be something the eye will look at. As I said, not building a show truck, going to be the industrial look and I am going to use it but I also want something which is pretty reasonable putting a lot of work into it so so this was the one which had been side swiped so we'll um, work away at that a bit more you can feel a few things not quite right but overall pretty good finish um, I haven't touched the cab, I won't go there. So my bands, um, yeah, they're in a bad way. They uh, are very, very out of shape. I'm gonna clean them up and yeah, you would have seen the bands are made for the muffler. I may put them in the roller machine and try and re-roll them. Might be worth it. The other ones are, sorry it's a bit dark, the other ones are sitting down there, they're quite scratched up as well. So, my thoughts are I'm going to try and re-roll, I'm going to sand them and see how they come up for a finish, for sanding. And if I can't get rid of the marks to a polished finish, I'm going to possibly, um, I know I haven't talked about the paint scheme for the truck yet, yeah I may end up painting these straps. So, some people wouldn't agree with that probably, they would like a polished look on the painted tank. 
but yeah, if I can't get them good enough to polish, I think I'll rather build with um, a primer and sand and get them pretty right and then, then paint. But we'll work our way through that as we go. I will sit and discuss the paint scheme later on, but I just don't want to throw that out there at this point in time because I'm not yeah, finalised myself on what I'm doing there. Okay, so what I'm doing here is cutting off a bit of bar stock, about the right diameter I need. I talked about um, buying the bushes for the front of the cab, mounts, pivots. Well, they failed to turn up and they're yeah, out of stock and all sorts of issues trying to buy online. So I went to the Kenworth dealer and yeah, just over $300 for two bushes, New Zealand. So I went to town, we've got a plastics um, company in town here, polyurethane. It cost me um, $38 New Zealand for two of these. So I don't attempt to machine it. I've watched a few YouTube videos on tooling, what they do. I could have a big failure, but as I said, don't know unless you try. So yeah, I'm gonna manufacture this part here. Oh, that's all finished. As I say, I'm going to manufacture this piece here in the lathe, and then I'm going to attempt to bore this polyurethane out there. OD size is correct to go in here with a bit of a taper. Might have to take a little bit off, but I'd like to leave it a bit fat. Mm. It's going to be pretty interesting. But anyway. Bit of a slow process. I run the couple of drill sizes through. I do go bigger with the drills and all that, but yeah, I just don't like using much in the lathe and chatter and pick the work up. I don't have much luck. So I'm just using that internal tool. Just going to bore it out to the size we need, which is yeah, this one. Just put that inside. I'll have a new drop soon, but not too much more to go. I'll get that. I'm going to leave it out of time there. So I've just put the polyurethane in there. I faced it off just with a normal tool at high speed. I'm just doing this with a, you know, a drill bit to start boring it out. This is easy, but I know you can drill it, but unless I make a cutter for the internal, I might end up in trouble yet. Let's drill it slowly. I just watched the YouTube videos and saw the guys to see how I get on with what I've got. And then we've got to go wrong, eh? There's no burnt material there, it's just drying. So I'm turning that at... 950. So when I faced it off, I had it at um, yeah, 1600, which is full speed for this lathe, just for the normal, normal tool bit. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Got a long way to go. Well, here I am, I've stepped up in drill size. I've sharpened it to make sure it's really sharp. Not that I'm one for sharpening drills. I'm just trying to 
break it off. Here's my 45.5 millimeter drill. I'm gonna have a go to see what this does. <laughs> moment of truth so there's my bush so the sleeves gonna go in there cab and here's my bush sorry yeah yeah so I'll show you the old one So obviously that was the thickness there inside of the old one and they obviously had a bit more rubber on the outside but I've, I've gone a bit thicker in that obviously I didn't want to machine that down I could have gone thicker in that which probably would have helped but the OD is actually over a bit for where it's got to go so yeah, it's going to squeeze up on that bush and it's all going to get pretty tight I hope it's never going to ruin me for what I'm going to do. No, it's better than what, what it was. I mean, I, I did that damage, but it had come to pieces. So, yeah. That's right. Cool. One down, one to go. I still got to machine the um, outside edge here. I got to relieve it for where it's going to sit inside the the um, pivot point. I'll show you that when I do it. Okay, I'm going to show you how I've turned the recess on the end of the bush to come up with that there. Not very high tech. I've just got a very small parting off tool here. So I'm still running at a high speed. <laughs> stop it every now and then to stick rid of the little turning off there yeah it's about right okay got my bracket got my homemade bush um, I was thinking about how to get it in there it is oversized a bit OD wise but yeah if I put the inner and in, it can't squeeze up so I'm gonna try and press this in here I may have to put a taper on one end of this yet on here to see what I can do just have a play um, I use my famous uh, cooking oil. I'm just going to set that up under, under there. Grab a bit more. 
Yeah. side but not the other. go in it expands sharp edge on there Right, it's going to show you something I just went and checked it before I put the bush into the into there, the steel bush. I was thinking, geez, I hope I machined all the length correct. So when that goes together, and goes in the cab, there's your um, offsets to alter the cab when you turn it all to lift or raise it. Because those are like that. So I just checked it on the mounts under there and it's perfect. It's going to sit in there and there. That's good. I've just got to go and turn a taper on this bush so I can press it into there. A bit tight. That's what I want though. Throwing them in here. Press. I had to take the frames right off to press the um, polyurethane bush in. So I've just got to hold the light here. It's a bit dark in the workshop. So, that's the inner sleeve, which was in the truck anyway. So I turn the um, steel bush, which is just moves in and out. I didn't want that a real press fit on there. It's tight, but it's not. Because, um, yeah, the polyurethane was a tight fit. I machined it on the outside to relieve it. So it's held in there because it's fatter in the middle. So, yeah, they're all right. Considering I can't source them, um, that was my only alternative and obviously we've got the other side here with the adjustment for the for the cab for the cab to be altered for its position once it's all in 